cast into the infinite immensity of spaces of which I am ignorant and which know me not. I am frightened. This is a quote from a man named Blaise Pascal, a 17th century mathematician and philosopher. In one sentence, Pascal poetically summarizes human existentialism, long before the likes of Kierkegaard and Nietzsche, whom history interprets as the first existentialist philosophers. Humans are finite atoms drifting in an infinite cosmic sea, unaware of our origin or our destination. Nothing is certain, save for one thing, the reality of our suffering. With all the malevolence the world has to offer, and without a clear purpose for it, one might question whether we should even live at all. Meditating on these questions for long periods of time usually results in some sort of neurosis, and understandably so. They are sometimes just too painful to contemplate. From time to time, however, we collectively notice someone who rises to the occasion. Someone who will tackle these questions with courage and clarity. Someone who bears the hellish burden of existential dread and paves the way forward for us. Pascal was one of those people who took the problem seriously, and is remembered centuries later for that very reason. One of the more recent tributes to his legacy can be found in a place that most historians and philosophers wouldn't expect, or even look. It's in a video game called Nier Automata. One of the characters in that game is a robot that is also named Pascal. This character, created by the game's director, Yoko Taro, serves as not only a tribute to Pascal's existential philosophy, but also as a sort of response to it. By applying Pascal's concepts to a robot, as opposed to a human, Yoko Taro opens an even wider pit of existential dread. He asks questions that are, seemingly, unprecedented in the world of sci-fi. Brilliant questions that, nonetheless, disturb us due to their lack of a coherent answer. Today, I will discuss these questions as a part of an ongoing argument I have been putting forward on my channel, that Nier Automata is the most profound video game ever made. In order to present these questions clearly, I must first discuss the short, difficult life of Pascal the Philosopher. Blaise Pascal was born on June 19, 1623. In his 39 years on Earth, Pascal accomplished more than billions of people ever will in their lifetime. He was a mathematical genius, responsible for inventing one of the first mechanical calculators as well as several other mathematical theorems. He was also well known for his work in physics, particularly in the realm of hydrodynamics. He was so influential, in fact, that his name was given to the unit that quantifies internal and atmospheric pressure. For example, standard atmosphere is quantified as 101,325 pascals. Given his intense interest in the natural world and his contributions to the fields of science and mathematics, it might surprise some of you that Pascal was also intensely religious. Though not initially religious, the tragedies he suffered compelled him towards Catholicism. From the age of 18 on towards his death, Pascal was stricken with a mysterious, nervous ailment. From the age of 26, he could not move without crutches. These along with other tragedies caused him great emotional distress. He needed a reason, a transcendent reason, to explain his suffering, and he found it within religion. Pascal wished to explain why he felt religion was necessary in order to survive emotionally and physically. He did this by writing a series of aphorisms, an incomplete series of thoughts which were eventually compiled into a book known as the Pensée. This book is universally seen as one of the greatest in the history of French prose. He was one of the heroes I referenced before who faced life's most difficult existential questions and responded as honestly as he could. Though he did write some statements which are easily challenged, the poetic and darkly comic nature of the Pensée established him as not only a mathematical legend, but a theological one as well. Within the Pensée, we find Pascal's most famous philosophical contribution, that which is known as Pascal's Wager. Pascal believed that in order to live a moral, meaningful life, it would be advantageous to believe in God. This hypothesis was based on Pascal's studies on probability theory. Simply put, there is no way to definitively prove whether God does 
or does not exist. One can make arguments and present evidence in regards to whether or not God exists, and one can determine their position based on these factors. Nevertheless, it is still impossible to prove God's existence beyond a reasonable doubt. Given that human reason is insufficient in determining God's existence, one is forced to wager a position on the matter. We must do this because, whether we like it or not, our position on the matter dictates the way we live our lives, at least in part. In Pascal's case, he wagered a belief in God because he felt that it would not only, as I said before, give meaning to our life's suffering, it would also motivate other human beings to adopt a common moral code that would civilize us and provide structure to our lives. If we lived as if God did not exist, if there was no transcendent purpose to our morality, then life's suffering would more likely corrupt our fellow man, breeding resentment, and malevolence. There are perfectly reasonable objections to Pascal's wager, ones that I happen to agree with. For example, one might assume that Pascal's wager was constructed purely with Christianity in mind. What if one happens to believe in a different god? Though Christianity is a religion followed by billions of people, who's to say that a belief in Christ is what will ensure a moral life and save us from eternal damnation? Why not a belief in Buddha or Allah or Yahweh? Moreover, simply stating a belief in God is likely not going to secure eternal life, and simply professing faith does not then educate us how to live properly. Some might reply that religious doctrine serves that purpose, but then again, it's not immediately obvious why one should favor Christianity over other popular religions. For the sake of time, I won't list other objections, but I will link to well-articulated objections in the description box below. I also encourage all of you to lay out your best arguments against Pascal's wager in the comments section. Keep in mind though, this is just one version of Pascal's wager. There are many other takes on this concept that vary in their utility. If one were to put forward a stronger version of the wager, one might instead say that it is better to act as if God exists rather than believe. As I said before, if there is a transcendent purpose to life's suffering, human beings are arguably more likely to bear the burden of being and not commit immoral acts. There is evidence to support this theory, that a belief in God seems to promote psychological as well as civilizational well-being. Even if one could definitively prove that God does not exist, one cannot deny that acting as if he does has its utility. Now the mere fact that I am defending an aspect of Pascal's wager might compel some of my viewers to say that I am secretly religious. I want to be clear that I have no definitive position on the matter. Belief or non-belief in God is not as clear-cut an issue as some may think. For those who think it is, I present to you the life of Pascal the Robot from Nier Automata. In many ways, Pascal the Robot mirrors the life of Pascal the Philosopher. The robot has also faced several tragedies in his life. He has seen several of his companions die in the war between machines and androids over the course of hundreds of years. In response to this dreadful state of affairs, Pascal sought a higher meaning to aspire to, something worth living for in spite of all the death surrounding him. This took the form of pacifism and education. Pascal was highly intellectual, studying the history of humankind and their philosophies. For example, at one point in the game, we are tasked with delivering a copy of the Pensee to Pascal the Robot. At another, we see Pascal actively studying Nietzsche. In this way, the life of Pascal the Robot mirrors that of other humans. They need something higher something greater to worship and aspire to in order to give meaning to life's suffering. However, we must take note of one clear difference between humans and robots. Though a machine's consciousness more or less mirrors that of a human's, one is natural and one is artificial. One can posit a belief that if a human being dies, their consciousness lives because it shares an attachment to the natural world. But one cannot say the same of an artificial consciousness. If Pascal the robot was to die, for example, that consciousness would not live on past death. Though this reality is not outright stated in the game, it is nonetheless implied. Humans have the luxury of being able to believe in the soul's transcendence, but machines do not. 
Therefore, if they are to survive life's suffering, they must follow an ethic which mirrors that of the aforementioned Nietzsche. Nietzsche believed that if one were to live as a non-believer in God, it would be necessary to create one's own values, one's own idols to aspire to. Not idols of the supernatural variety, but of the secular. Pascal the Robot's idol was pacifism and intellectualism, as well as the protection of fellow machine kind. This is an attractive theory, no doubt. However, there are many examples in real life and in fiction that rebut, or at least challenge, this philosophy. One such example was the tragedy Pascal the Robot eventually suffers. Towards the end of the game, many of the machines in Pascal's village suddenly go rampant and begin to eat each other. Though Pascal is able to evacuate the child machines to the nearby factory, their location is quickly discovered by a machine envoy. In order to protect the children, Pascal temporarily discards his pacifistic ways and fights off the machine army along with the android known as A2. After achieving victory, Pascal runs back into the factory to tell the children the good news. But upon his return, he discovers a grisly tragedy. All the children committed suicide. As Pascal despairs, he explains to A2 why this happened. He felt he made a mistake in teaching the children the concept of fear. He felt that doing so would keep the children safe from danger. However, he could not foresee an event that would cause the children to feel such overwhelming fear that it would motivate every single child to take their own life. With this realization, Pascal figures he cannot go on living with the knowledge that he failed, and that he might have been responsible for the deaths of children. So, he considers two options. He asks A2 to hack his memory database and delete all memory of this incident, so that he may go on living. If this memory hack were to fail, then Pascal would commit suicide. Though the event itself is enough of a horror, the greatest horror comes when we consider the ethics of Pascal's choices. Given the fact that an artificial consciousness does not have the hypostatized transcendence that humans do, do Pascal's options seem unreasonable? Pascal's wager does not apply here. There is no transcendent god for machines, and any secular replacement one might choose is vulnerable to tragedy. In a situation like Pascal's, is it reasonable to assume that Pascal's suffering is so great that death would be a viable option? But above all, the worst thing to consider is how easily a human being could find themselves suffering a tragedy on par with that of Pascal's. In such a situation, Pascal's wager may not be able to turn us away from despair and malevolence. But then again, maybe the only thing that could save us in that situation is the hypostatized god. Suddenly, the wager does not seem irrational. By applying Pascal's philosophy to machines, to artificial beings with artificial consciousness, Yoko Taro opened up a whole new discussion on existentialist philosophy. He raises so many questions for which we have no definitive answer. I suppose that we will begin to address these questions when consciousness is replicated digitally. For now, we are left to marvel at Yoko Taro's courage in addressing these questions, just as Pascal did 400 years ago. If you guys liked this video, if you found it valuable in any way, please make sure to hit that like button. That tells the YouTube algorithm that not only this video, but all the other videos on my channel are worth watching. It's quick, it's easy, and it helps me out a tremendous amount. Make sure to follow me on Twitter and on Twitch. Links to that and more are in the description box below. Until next time, stay yellow.